This module will discuss the diurnal cycles of convection observed in parts of the tropics. When convection is active, its precipitation is observed to vary based on the time of day, which is related to the variability in short wave insulation that occurs over a 24 hour period. This figure illustrates the main mechanisms involved in the diurnal cycle of convection. During nighttime, shown on the left panel, two mechanisms dominate. The first is by altering lapse rate. During nighttime, the bottoms of clouds warm because they absorb long wave radiation emitted upward from the surface below and emitted downward from cloud above. At the tops of clouds, radiative cooling occurs because long wave radiation escapes to space and is only absorbed from emissions below. The low level warming and upper level cooling steepens the lapse rate in the troposphere making the environment more unstable and promoting more intense updrafts. The other growth mechanism occurs as a result of a local pressure gradient that develops at low levels between clouds and the clear environment. While the bases of clouds warm due to absorption of long wave radiation, the clear air environment cools by emitting long wave radiation to space. The cooler region induces a local high pressure on the mesoscale, and the resulting pressure gradient drives low-level flow from the environment toward the convection, inducing low-level convergence, which is one of the ingredients, ingredients we listed at the beginning of the course as a promoter of updraft growth. During the daytime, shortwave radiation heats deep convection, although not uniformly. Upper reaches of deep convection are warmed more although this is partially canceled out by long wave cooling that still occurs during the day. The vertical profile of heating induces two circulations during the day, a deep circulation that drives inflow at mid-levels and a shallow circulation that detrains moisture into the environment gradually and drives low level convergence that promotes the continued growth of weak shallow convection. In typical heating profiles uh, of convective heating are shown over here on the right, which looks like the shape of the vertical velocity profiles during day and night, on average as well, associated with the diurnal variability. The vertical structure of radiative heating in non-precipitating anvil clouds reiterates these points. The figure displayed currently illustrates radiative heating rates in anvils, such as zero on the y-axis equals cloud base, and one denotes the cloud top. Solid black lines in each panel denote daily mean long wave heating profiles for anvils with a variety of thickness. Thin anvils, which are defined as up to two kilometers, two to six kilometer deep anvils, and very deep thick anvils that are greater than six kilometers in depth. Dash lines denote the short wave heating. You can see how long wave heating profiles denote heating at low levels in the clouds, particularly the thicker clouds and cooling at upper levels, or at least cooling at the base of the cloud that is less than it is at the top when considering the thin series. This promotes a destabilization of the atmosphere where the cloud is located by increasing the lapse rate and therefore promoting the growth of more cloud. During nighttime, when only long wave radiative transfer occurs, long wave cooling can cause a diurnal maximum in cloud depth size, and even precipitation. During the day, heating occurs throughout the cloud and tends to cancel out most of the long wave cooling in anvils. Therefore, solar radiation supports stabilization of the atmosphere after being destabilized at night. The diurnal cycle of precipitation in clouds are shown here for over tropical oceans during large scale conditions that are, for the top panel, convectively active, and for the bottom panel, convectively inhibited. The blue dashed lines in either panel denotes the rain rate as a function of local time of day, which is shown on the x-axis. In the deep tropics, daytime is typically something like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The green shading, or the top of the green shading, indicates the magnitude of low tropospheric humidity which is labeled on the rightmost 
y-axis on the tops of each panel. And the red shaded region indicates the magnitude of the SST, or sea surface temperature, which varies between 28.5 and 29.5 degrees C in the schematic. During convectively enhanced periods, looking at these top figures, the rainfall maximum occurs in early morning before daybreak and is accompanied by the deepest convection observed during the 24-hour period. Convection then decays after sunrise, but as convection dissipates, more solar radiation reaches the surface, warming the sea surface during the daytime and enhancing surface fluxes while the troposphere, absent of as much convection, slowly dries, as seen by the green line. This is during daytime. The energy-rich boundary layer that develops promotes the growth of new shallow convection at night, which gradually moistens the troposphere. The low troposphere reaches maximum humidity a couple of hours before the maximum in rain rate. In other words, the low tropospheric humidity provided by shallow convection is required before the deep convection can develop. In the bottom panel, during convectively suppressed conditions, the SST varies more with time and similarly reaches a late afternoon maximum. We would say then that the diurnal variability of sea surface temperature or the magnitude of the diurnal variability is greater during convectively inhibited periods of time. However, two muted peaks in rain rate are observed instead of just one. One occurs as a result of increased convection promoted by the SST maximum. This happens in the late evening. SST decreases after dark and convection weakens, but the convection that does develop moistens the lower troposphere, which allows for a secondary overnight maximum in rain rate to occur in the early morning hours. Of course, other variability occurs on top of the diurnal cycle, so convection may not follow the schematic every day, but the graphic does describe the long-term average behavior of convection over tropical oceans. The relationship between rainfall, cloud depth and coverage, and sea surface temperature can be seen in model simulations as well. At top is total aerial coverage plotted in the, by the red line and aerial coverage colored as a function of height and time. At about one kilometer altitude, a maximum in cloud aerial coverage occurs in late afternoon and mostly consists of boundary layer convection. And the total aerial coverage of cloud peaks at about that time. It corresponds with a maximum in sea surface temperature seen on the bottom plot by the black line. The maximum cloud coverage at three to four kilometers altitude, denoted by these blue bullseyes here, occurs a few hours later and is followed shortly thereafter by the maximum in precipitation. Simulated time series of Q2 profiles in the top panel show that clouds cause moistening of the low free troposphere, denoted by the blue colors which show a negative moisture sink. The moistening is maximized in the model in early evening around 18Z local time, or excuse me, 1800 local time, and a maximum in specific and relative humidity follows a couple of hours later, as seen on the bottom plot. The anomalous humidity profile seen at bottom in shaded colors are tilted to the right with height on the time axis, meaning that the humidification occurs at higher altitudes after it occurs at lower altitudes. In other words, shallow convection mostly confined to the boundary layer moistens the troposphere where it resides before the deeper convection develops. Diurnal variability is also frequently seen in tropical cyclones. The diurnal cycle often manifests itself in the form of lower brightness temperatures, meaning colder and higher cloud tops, during nighttime. Cloud regions are often observed to expand outward away from the center of the cyclone during early morning as well, and into the day. This figure shows one such example by looking at infrared brightness temperatures. The bottom panels show the difference in brightness temperature between mid-afternoon and early morning, and the black rings 
or indicate radii from the hurricane center. A ring of cold cloud tops close to the hurricane center in early morning can be seen expanding outward from the center in the early day into mid-afternoon. And another example in a more sheared hurricane is shown here. From early morning to mid-afternoon, you really see the expansion of these cold IR brightness temperatures. The daily outward expansions of the, low, of the low brightness temperatures, the shaded regions on the plots here, are seen in the Havmala plots for various storms in 1999. For a Havmala plot, or in these examples of Havmala, as time increases moving down one axis, in this case moving down the y-axis, and the x-axis shows increasing radius toward the right. And by radius, I mean the distance from the center of the tropical cyclone. The red arrows show examples of lower brightness temperatures moving down and right on the plot, meaning outward or to larger radii at later times. And these aren't just the only examples. You can see many other examples that aren't plotted in the red arrows here. Model simulations of idealized steady-state tropical cyclones provide some insight into the mechanisms responsible for the outward expansion of clouds in a diurnal cycle. Shown in the top plots are radiative heating and stream functions during nighttime, around 300 local time, and daytime, around 1400 local time. Blue shading indicates radiative cooling, while red denotes radiative heating. During the night, deep upward motion is present near the core of the cyclone, or at least within about 200 kilometers of the core, and two overturning circulations are present. One is deep and the other is sort of moderately deep in the lower half of the troposphere. The bottom left panel is a time series of anomalous radiative heating and vertical motion relative to the long-term mean as a function of time of day. As seen by the contours that are not shaded in the bottom left plot, upward motion is maximized at low levels during the night and at upper levels during the day as part of a radiatively driven overturning circulation seen in the top right panel in which upward motion is partially driven by shortwave heating aloft in deep cumulonimbus clouds seen by the red shading here and also aloft in the bottom left plot. Plots of theta v in stream function as a function of radius, like the previous Havmalers we saw, but turned 90 degrees in this case, indicate that the thermodynamic and dynamic features in the TC propagate outward with speeds of about 10 meters per second. You can see that by looking at the tilt of the colors in these plots. This corresponds closely with the observed outward propagation speed of brightness temperatures in satellite data. It is hypothesized that the outward propagation is driven by inertia gravity waves forced by radiative heating above a level cloud. However, the propagation of the wave does not appear to be dynamically coupled to precipitation, meaning that it does not reinforce or get reinforced by latent heating associated with condensation. Different diurnal variability is seen over land, and the diurnal variability over land can furthermore impact that seen over nearby oceans. Seen here are observed diurnal cycles of rainfall during burial summer over the Philippines. The amplitude of the diurnal variability is much larger over land than over ocean as seen in the leftmost plot. This occurs because terrain induced precipitation is strongly forced by diurnal variability. The time of day of maximum precipitation is a function of space as shown in the middle panel. Rainfall peaks over land in later afternoon. The pink colors, the red colors denote about 3 to 6 p.m. local time. Convection then begins to move offshore, occurring at later hours overnight over adjacent seas. For example, mesoscale convective systems often form near land during late afternoon and propagate offshore over the South China Sea. Thus, the maximum rainfall over the sea is typically at nighttime, although factors other than just diurnally varying radiation may influence when and where exactly rain occurs. The diurnal cycle is so pronounced over land in some places because convection is forced topographically. During the day, the land warms much faster than the ocean. 
As a result, a sea breeze circulation, driven by pressure gradients, develops. The pressure gradients drive flow onshore during the daytime and forces convergence near the bases of steep terrain, which enhances convection in those locations. Similar variability is seen in this figure over the maritime continent. The figure is plotted such that time proceeds in a clockwise direction with midnight local time in the bottom right panel. Peak rainfall over the land occurs in the late afternoon or early evening after daytime insulation has warmed the land's surface. You can see that in these plots at 1500, 1800, and 2100 in particular. Convective elements and associated stratiform regions then move offshore during the overnight hours, causing rain to maximize over adjacent seas overnight. This begins to become evident around midnight local time and especially at 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. A daytime minimum in rainfall is seen around midday before rain begins to pick back up in late afternoon. Large-scale dynamics also impact diurnal variability and affect the propagation of various equatorially trapped features. If convection becomes quote-unquote trapped over land and fails to propagate offshore, then the upward transport of moist, warm, boundary layer air from over the ocean or seas is limited, reducing the amount of water vapor and upper-level cloud present, which impacts radiative heating profiles and further feeds back onto the diurnal cycle. 